Welcome friends, this is the second class on Bode Plots and today we are going to learn how to draw Bode Plot for 1 by 1 plus Tau S plus 1. So the important points we will cover in today's lecture are how to obtain magnitude and phase for this transfer function, then further how to obtain the asymptotes while drawing the Bode magnitude plot. Then obtain the critical frequency or corner frequency while drawing body plot. Also, we have to obtain the error between the actual and the approximate plot. Thus, we shall draw the body magnitude plot. Similarly, we shall obtain the important points at critical frequencies and other frequencies so that the body phase plot can be drawn. So, by the end of this lecture, we should be able to draw a Bode magnitude and phase plot for the transfer function 1 by 1 plus tau s plus 1. So, let us go. We start with the magnitude plot of 1 by 1 plus tau s plus 1. So, as we have worked out in many classes, We can write g at j omega equal to 1 by 1 plus j omega tau by assigning s equal to j tau s equal to j omega 1 divided by root 1 plus omega square tau square is the magnitude for this and the phase is definitely minus tan inverse of omega tau. So, if we take the logarithmic of this log base 10 as discussed in the last lecture g at g omega equal to because this is the radical in the denominator so log base 10 this is magnitude of 1 by root 1 plus omega square tau square this is nothing but equal to minus log base 10 square root of 1 plus omega square tau square and again this is nothing but this is equal to minus of log base 10 1 plus omega square tau square and this power 1 by 2 this is the radical so we can write log base 10 g at j omega equal to minus of 1 by 2 log base 10 1 plus omega square tau square like this so if you write 20 log base 10 mod g at j omega equal to minus of so 20 by 2 is 10 so minus of 10 log base 10 mod of 1 plus omega square tau square so, we can draw it very systematically. So, further we can write for the frequency very much less than omega, say for the condition when we say omega tau is very much less than 1. So, this is the situation when you can write 20 log base 10 mod of g at j omega is equal to minus of 10 into log of base 10 so omega is uh, omega tau is very much less than 1 since therefore 1 plus omega tau square should approximate to 1 so log 1 is 0 this is simple so this will help us to determine an asymptote asymptote which I will give the nomenclature one so now consider the case and omega tau is very much greater than 1 then what I will say log base 10 mod of g at j omega this equal to minus 10 log base 10 here because omega square tau square will be very much greater than 1 in that case I can write this as omega square tau square this one so now we can write in simple 
way this is the square term omega square tau square is omega tau whole square so square will come out so minus 10 will become minus 20 log base 10 mod of omega tau this mod of omega tau so this is help us is getting the situation when we will find another asymptote another asymptote I will give the nomenclature 2 so we can see that asymptote 2 is a linear function of omega tau so we can take it in little simpler way and we can say that this is equal to minus 20 log because omega we are considering positive so log based in omega log based in omega minus 20 log Best than tau. We can so we see that this is a linear function of log omega. So as we have studied in the last lecture, that x-axis is scaled in the graph as logarithmic plot of base 10. So function of log omega will be a linear change in case we plot on the semi-log plot. So the asymptote is a linear function of log omega base 10 with a negative slope that we will see how the asymptote 2 will have a negative slope. So because Initially, we say that the magnitude is zero decibels for a long time. So we can draw it in this way. Uh, the first asymptote, the first asymptote, it should come from zero decibel. It should come like this. So here, we have to check it out that. The corner frequency between the two asymptotes has to be determined. So how we can determine the corner frequency between the two asymptotes? Let us see that how the corner frequency can be drawn between the two asymptotes. Take the first asymptote. You see that it is for for very low frequency, omega less, very much less than one. This is drawn, so it will be a straight line. But for the second asymptote, if you uh, approximate that the omega is very much greater than one, so we can write the uh, 20 log 20 log base 10 mod of g at g omega this is approximated as minus 20 log base 10 mod omega tau so this situation or this situation we can say that when the value of this omega is decreasing in such a way that the magnitude this decibel becomes zero it implies that omega tau should become one that is which implies that omega equals to one by tau so for omega equals to one by tau this second asymptote will cross the zero decibel line and that is the point of intersection with the first asymptote also. So here we can write conveniently that suppose I am taking this uh, 10 power 0 is there. Here I should write the omega. Omega is radians, radians per second. So here I am starting with 10 power 0. This is 1. So this is 2. This is 3, 4, 5. Seven. 
this is 5 so exactly this is 6 exactly this is 7 exactly this is 8 so 5 4 I am assuming as the corner frequency omega equals 1 by tau so we'll have certain advantage of it this you take as omega equals to 1 by 2 tau and 8 you can consider as omega equals to 2 by tau double the corner frequency we'll utilize this information later but at this point of time this is the corner frequency so at this corner frequency it means this point this point will have the corner frequency so the first asymptote will be straight line as we know so it will go straight like this and then proceed further but the second asymptote will start from here so this is the first asymptote and this is the second asymptote so second asymptote how long it should go so we can understand that here if we see that the frequency which is 10 times the corner frequency this that is uh, here I have 4 so I take 10 I take uh, 20 I take 20 over here 20 30 40 so this is 10 times the corner frequency so if you take this 40 as a point so you will see that for 10 times the corner frequency the slope will reduce by 20 decibels so let us first draw the plot then you will understand in detail so i am drawing the asymptote 2 as this one as the asymptote 2 like this straight line this is a straight line this should be straight line like this so this is the second asymptote we'll find after some time how this is coming as minus uh, 20 decibels per decade because you see in the magnitude in the magnitude plot here in the magnitude plot if you change if you change this omega by uh, 10 times 1 by tau that is omega equals to 10 times tau then you will see that this amount will give you a change of value of minus 20 decibels means it is 20 decibel per decade similarly we can also test for omega equals to 2 by tau 2 by tau we will say that the change in this magnitude change will become instead of 20 decibels per decade you will get another value which will give a slope of octave so if the frequency is doubled and we can check the amount we will see that that is the slope expressed in decibels instead of decibels it will be expressed in octave so this is decibels per octave if we change the frequency for to double the frequency or half the frequency or half the frequency so if the frequency is doubled or halved we can measure the slope in decibels per octave or if we increase the frequency to 10 times or give reduce the frequency to a fraction of one tenth then it will we will express it as decibels per decade so our next job is to find out the exact plot because this is an approximate plot so if we have to find out the exact plot we have to check certain things first is what are the errors at different frequencies so let us check the errors at different frequencies let us first check the errors at different frequencies so 
I am taking 20 log 20 log base 10 mod g at j omega equal to minus 10 log base 10 so I have placed omega equals to 1 by tau so 1 plus so omega tau if you place the omega equal to 1 by 2 it become 1 so that value is approximately equal to minus 10 is the exact value 20 log 2 and that is approximately equal to minus 3 decibels this is minus 3 decibels so error at the corner frequency is of 3 decibels this is important information similarly if we check it for first asymptote then also you will find that error at the corner frequency is 3 decibels now as we understand the slope of the magnitude plot from every change of frequency by a factor of 10 is defined as decibels per decade we have defined earlier and slope of magnitude plot for every change of frequency by a factor of 2 is defined as decibels per octave that you should keep in mind because slope we can give a slope is same if you are writing it in decibels per decade decibels per decade its value will be different and if you write decibels per octave its value will be different so when you write a uh, slope of the asymptote you should be careful about what is the unit so next we can find out what is the value of the error at half the frequency or double the frequency so if you want to find out the value of the error at half the frequency or double the frequency so we have to place 20 log base 10 g at g omega equals to minus 20 log base 10 so this is 1 plus omega tau is there to the power 1 by 2 this is equal to minus 20 or you can just write minus 10 log base 10 mod of 1 plus instead of omega you plus 1 by 2 tau into tau so this will be simplified to give you 1 decibels per ticket 1 sorry 1 decibels similarly you can find out the case when the frequency is doubled so you can find the case when the frequency is doubled means I am writing for you 20 log base 10 g at j omega equal to minus 20 log base 10 1 plus omega tau for omega you are placing 2 by tau by tau into tau modulus of this and to the power 1 by 2 so this will be again approximately 2 minus 1 why the reason I am telling you because the first asymptote is this second asymptote is this and your actual plot will be this so this is the error at the omega equals to 1 by tau this is the error at omega equals to 1 by 2 tau and this is error at omega equals to uh, 2 by tau so in both the cases the error will be same so let us check it the plot how it will appear in the plot
here I draw the approximate is drawn and I draw the exact plot you can say that if we draw the exact plot it will come like this and there is a three decibels error near the corner frequency and again it will be approximate by like this so here if you see the difference and at double the frequency if you see the difference these two differences should be one decibels and here at the corner frequency if you check the difference it should be three decibels so this is how we can plot the magnitude for body so once we plot the magnitude for body we can plot the phase so how do you plot the phase for body So phase angle is simple phi equals to minus tan inverse omega tau when you check for omega tau is very much less than 1 you will get phi equals to 0 simple and similarly when omega tau is very much greater than 1 we have already determined phi equals to minus 90 degree when omega tau is equal to 1 at that time phi equals to minus 45 degree this also you can determine easily from this expression if this is the case then how the plot should come here you can see that you have uh, 0 degree I can say that this is minus 45 degree, this is minus 90 degree, this line. So we have the corner frequency, this is the corner frequency line, this is the line for corner frequency. At this line, you will check that that is the frequency 1 by omega equals to 1 by tau. So that is the minus 45 degree line, right? So when the frequency very much less than this, this is 4, this is 4. So you can say that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. This is the point when the frequency will be very much less than 1. So we will consider this point and 10 times of this corner frequency will be 10 power 1 means 10, 20, 30, 40 at this point. So these two lines we will be approximating the phase. These two points, these two points will be approximating the path of the phase if we are assuming the uh, frequency to be very high or very less than 1. So what should be the actual phase? So if we see the actual phase should be Or it will come from infinite frequency like this like this and then it will slowly take the turn like this and it will go like this so this is how the phase plot can be drawn for 1 by 1 plus tau s so, so the both magnitude and phase plots can be drawn analytically in this way Again, I am I have drawn it for clearance. This is a pre-drawn plot, and by hands I have drawn it. If you use MATLAB, you can draw it very neat and clean way, and you can understand how the changes are happening. So this much is for today, and in the next lecture we shall learn what is uh, the Bode plot for the second order systems. This is the textbook by Professor M. Gopal. I always suggest and I myself refer. 
these two other textbooks are also there you can refer to these books and if you find this lecture useful you press the like button and subscribe the channel friends this much is for today and thank you for your patient listening